Hey everybody, hope you're doing really well today. My name is Corey here at ThemeCo. I just wanted to make a quick video for y'all today concerning the updated row element, which you can find in Pro 3, X7, and Cornerstone 4. Now, this is really just gonna be a quick introductory overview, kind of showing you around where to find certain features and maybe comparing the workflow of the old row with the new a little bit. I, I will do some more detailed videos later concerning the mechanics of the row and, and getting the most out of certain features, but this is really just gonna be kind of a quick tour of the new element as it were. So that all being said, let's just jump right in. Now I've got this newish page here that I've already added a section to. And the first big difference you'll see is this choose a layout view over in the preview. So anytime you have a new row with no columns in it yet, you'll see this view. And you have this choice of nine different presets, just common defaults that we all need from day to day in our designs. You know, we all need 50-50, one third, two third, four equal columns. Um, and clicking these will not only give you the amount of columns you need for that layout, but it will also select some sensible responsive defaults for you since you can now control that on your own. So uh, let's just get started. We'll click this four equal column layout here. And you'll see that not only do we have our four columns here, but we also have our responsive defaults. So at small, yeah, it jumps down to two columns there, and then it goes to one on extra small. You can always tweak this later, and we'll run through this in just a second here. But the first big difference between the old row and the new that I wanna draw your attention to is that um, you can have as many columns to a row now as you want. You know, before the column count and the column layout were kind of tied together. Now you can really just add anything you need, which makes it so much easier to manage large layouts. And it also just makes it more flexible too. So for example, with this particular situation, let's say I wanted to add two more columns. You'll notice that since these two columns had run out of space on this initial row, they simply wrapped to a new line. So they're all within the same row element, but now they're just on a new line. And what's great about that, once you start getting into multi-line rows, is that you can really take advantage of some of the really cool Flexbox features like, you know, aligning things horizontally in unique ways that you can't do with uh, the old row. Or we can take advantage of some other Flexbox features like making certain cells grow to fill all available space. Lots of fun stuff you can do, but the, the big thing to take away there is that your column count is completely independent of your layout now. Uh, moving on to your layout, you can see that we can easily choose from these presets to change the layout at any screen size. And then we can affect the layout at different breakpoints as we go down. So the other really cool thing is with this layout control, as you resize your browser down, you'll notice that this tab automatically highlighted to say that, hey, you know, you're on the medium breakpoint now. Um, it's just kind of reminding you of where you're at and you can tweak that to be whatever you want it to be. And then we can move this back out. And you'll now see that we've got our four column layout here. We've got three columns there, two, and then one. And this can be whatever you want it to be for each breakpoint, which is a really great thing. Um, if there is something on a particular breakpoint that doesn't completely fit your needs, you can always jump into this custom box and change these values. Now these need to be percentage values um, for them to remain draggable over here in the preview, which is another really cool feature. Um, but you can customize these to whatever value you want. In addition, you can jump over here to the preview and you'll notice that when you hover over the row, this very faint uh, dashed line appears in the vertical gap between each column. If you simply click down on that and drag left to right, you can manually change the value of these columns over here and you'll see those new values reflected over here in the custom box like so. Um, one quick little side note about these values is if you are manually writing in values, do make sure to use two decimal points just to make sure that all the calculations work out um, as expected and you don't get any um, odd behavior with a rounding error or something like that. So with the layouts, you have um, some great presets to start from. We can go custom if we need, or we can manually drag the columns back and forth over here. 
uh, moving right on down we already touched a little bit on the alignment controls which i will go into more detail in some other videos but keep in mind that you have that available and that it will only be visible if you have um, some extra space for those things to work in so like i showed the center alignment you know that will only work when you don't have uh, cells filling up all this space in here um, in addition we've got vertical alignment go into more detail on that later um, but a huge addition to the new row as well is native gaps so we can adjust the spacing between each column by tweaking this value so if I just move this up to 2 you'll notice that the width between each column becomes increased if I make this 2 now the distance between each line has gone up there as well so another huge addition now that we've got native gaps and everything just works responsively as it should um, in addition to that we've got some layout options we can reverse things um, again I'll show that in another video we can have cells grow to fill all space if we need it to um, and then we've got just the standard uh, features that you're used to from the old row you know the global container text align simple backgrounds things like that as for the columns themselves, pretty much everything is just like the old column. The one big difference is that you can optionally turn on uh, Flexbox layouts for the content of your column. So what that means is if you turn on Flexbox layout, anything within that column can then be laid out using Flexbox. So this means you can easily uh, vertically center elements or do all sorts of cool layout tricks using Flexbox with that. So just something to be aware of and something that you won't need always, but it is there in case you want it. So um, that's basically it. Just a very quick overview of the new row, kind of running through the column count, the layout, the gaps, the alignment, the different layout options here. There's a lot of new things to play with, and we're very excited to bring this new element to you all. So thank you very much for taking a, a little moment out of your day to watch this we hope you got something out of it and we look forward to bringing some more content to you very soon